Richard, thanks very much for agreeing to be interviewed for Lexter. First, well, actually, first, I feel a little bit overdressed. All right. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I would uh, appear in the usual Quinn Emanuel uniform that I wear, which is jeans, a T-shirt, uh, and a jumper. We don't, as you probably know, we, we don't have any formal dress code here, and people can essentially wear what they want to wear. Uh, the only thing, obviously, we insist on is that they do occasionally wear a suit to go to a client meeting or, or appear in court. But for for most part, people just wear what they want to wear and, and feel comfortable. Uh, can you give us a summary, uh, a very brief summary of your own career to date and, and what your role is at, at, at Quinn? Yeah, sure. Well, my, my role uh, at the moment, I'm one of the co-managing partners of, of Quinn Emanuel. I co-manage the practice with Supervisor QC, who... Uh, who was also uh, the person I founded the practice with uh, back in 2008. Uh, my career uh, is, is uh, quite simple. I started off as a trainee at Bank & McKenzie. I qualified there um, and spent six months there post-qualification, but I wanted to do something very specific um, when I qualified, which was insolvency litigation. And for those purposes, I, there was an opportunity at Cadwallader. I went to Cadwallader and worked with the likes of Andrew Wilkinson and James Room, uh, who are now practice leaders in, in different firms. And I was there for five years uh, doing insolvency, insolvency litigation and, and commercial litigation. And then I moved to Kirkland, Kirkland and Ellis. I was there for six years. I made partner at Kirkland and Ellis in 2004, uh, doing again a mixture of um, restructuring, litigation, and arbitration and commercial litigation. And then finally, I had the opportunity, I was approached about Quinn Emanuel in 2007, and uh, thought it was a fantastic opportunity not to be missed, couldn't be passed over, had to be done. Uh, and so I took the risk then, which was you know, a, a, a sort of a considerable risk. There was, there was literally nothing in London uh, to join. Um, I joined first. And then two months later, I was joined by Sue. And then I have been here now nearly eight years. So it's the firm at which I've spent the longest part of my career uh, so far. So it is possible to be entrepreneurial in law? Absolutely. I would say it's to be successful in law, it is an absolutely fundamental requirement. Um, there is not a single partner in London, as far as I'm concerned, that hasn't in some way become or been entrepreneurial in terms of where they've got to. Uh, but particularly in this environment, uh, in a small office in a large US firm, in a marketplace that's probably the most competitive in the world, uh, you know, doing um, the kind of work that we want to do, you absolutely have to have a, an entre entrepreneurial bent to your, uh, to your personality. And you've obviously, you've obviously got that yourself and made a number of lateral moves um, uh, throughout your career to date. What yeah. personal benefits have you gained from making a lateral move? Uh, growth and development. Uh, I mean, I've moved, you're absolutely right, the, the, the fundamental reasons I've moved on, on each and every occasion has, been about, has not been about unhappiness with where I was. It's been about the step up and the opportunity where I was going. Cadwallader was, again, a startup practice. I joined that as a very young associate and saw that practice grow and um, up to when I left, it was about 80 lawyers. I joined it when there was seven. Uh, Kirkland was about was an established law firm in London, but they had no English practice at all. Uh, that was about joining at a different level and working with another partner I'd uh, worked with at Cadwallader and building that practice from scratch, uh, which was built into one, is now one of the leading restructuring practices in London. And the, the people who are now there were the people that I was instrumental in hiring and, and bringing on board. And the move here was the opportunity to start from absolute scratch as a partner, a practice that I believed was, um, at, the, at the time, it was only an idea, right? The idea of having a litigation only practice in London that not only says it will sue banks or, or go against some of these institutions, not only just said it will, it said it wanted to do them and that was what we were going out to do. That was a completely novel idea. No one knew it was going to, no, no one knew it was going to succeed at the time. Um, it has succeeded. We now have multiple copycat practices in, in London that are trying to effectively do the same thing. And so it was that, it was that opportunity. It, it, it could have failed. 
Uh, it didn't, you know, f fortunately for, for me and uh, a number of other partners are here now, but um, it was an incredible opportunity uh, to be part of that, and I haven't regretted it for a single moment since I've, since I've been here. What's been the most exciting case that you've been personally involved with here? The most exciting thing about being here, I mean, the cases are great, and the quality of work we get is fantastic, and, you know, where we've come to in such a short space of time is amazing. I'm a, you know, two days ago we had a, a dinner in London for 40 general counsel of major, major organisations. And to sit in that room with all those people and think these are clients of our practice here in London was an amazing feeling. When I think back, when I was sat literally on a park bench figuring how to, how to, how to take the idea and make it into an actuality, it was an incredible feeling. Uh, so that's the most exciting thing for me. The cases I've worked on, like Martin says, I have a, a phenomenally diverse practice. Um, this time last year I was working on a case involving events in Tanzania, very large mining company being sued um, uh, for effectively for personal injury. Uh, it was being fought out in the English court. Um, on the other end I've been working for a very large bank against another very large bank in relation to a very complicated structured tax product. I do restructuring cases, I act for hedge funds in various litigations in England and, and around the world. Um, I'm doing a, profession, a very large professional negligence case. I mean it's just the pure diversity of what we do here is, is incredibly interesting, rewarding, um, you're not pigeonholed here. Any, any partner in this practice, be it someone who's labelled with arbitration or someone's labelled with commercial litigation, can, can open themselves up to doing any, any case. We don't, there's no boundaries here. Uh, you're truly um, unleashed as a, as a lawyer in a way that you would, never, you would never be able to operate in any other practice in London. You know, I, I regularly meet with partners from other firms and interview them, talk, talk to them about this practice. And it is a truly exceptional environment, a truly, you know, uh, fantastic place uh, to develop as a, uh, as a lawyer. And I, I say to um, other lateral candidates I talk to is that the defining element of this practice has been the, the manner in which my career has accelerated in a way that it just, it just couldn't have done in any other practice. You know, there's very few cases that you, you get to turn down because of conflicts. The cases that we take on are usually pretty tough cases, the hard cases. We're up against, you know, large companies, large institutions. They're very well defended. Um, they're, they're very hard. And, you know, it's, it, it's, as a litigator, that's the true test of your, of your mettle. It's not working on an easy case where all the documents are in your favour. and It's working on those tough cases that, that I think really defines you know, who you are as a litigator and creates daily, the daily challenges that you have to that face, but that make you get up, that make you get out of bed in the morning and really want to be, you know, be at your desk and working. Well, it's certainly been a, quite an exciting month of news here at, at, at Quinn. Uh, Stephen Yargish, who I actually used to work with at a and was, was one of only three solicitor advocates to, be, uh, to take silk uh, in this round. And you just announced uh, the, the hire of a, a new lateral partner, uh, Paul Friedman from Clyde Co. But what, what are these, all these lateral hires at partner level, what does that mean for your own associates? Uh, what, what sort of opportunities are there for associates here to make partner? There's, there's, gr there's great opportunities. Uh, and if I might say so, that question assumes a mindset which doesn't apply here, which is the mindset is, is that you know, every firm has a particular structure. Um, you know, UK firms, other US firms tend to have a sort of very hierarchical structure where you know, the, the view is there's a, a cake that's certain size and that you can only divide that cake up so many times and therefore there's a kind of natural limit on the number of partners that you can make up. Well, that doesn't really apply here because all you're right, we're, bit, we're, bit, we're a firm fundamentally built on lateral hires. And what we try and hire are people who generate business. So we're not hiring service partners to service the existing work. We're hiring people to build 
the empire, for want of a better description. People who will go out on the streets, find work. And in large part, that's what we've, we've done that successfully, and we continue to do that successfully. And the only single principal um, business uh, model that we have is hire great people. If you hire great people, they are not difficult to manage, they generate work, uh, and they continue to grow the practice. So the answer to your question is, is that, in fact, it's not a limit on, on making up um, internal hires. It's actually the necessary, um, you know, it's the, it's the necessary um, uh, factor of our business uh, to create those opportunities for partners to be made up. Now, I can only, I can only, the only thing I can objectively point to in London is to say we have been going uh, nearly eight years, will be eight years in April this week, this year. And in that eight years, we've made up three internal hires. Um, and, you know, there are opportunities going, going forward for partners to be made up. We've got a number of candidates here which are, who are well on track. Uh, and, you know, I can guarantee you over the next two to three years, we'll be making up more, um, more partners. That is not to say that it's easy to make partner here. It is, n it is not. Um, but for the right person with the right skill set, the right intelligence, the right uh, determination, um, and, and with, with some entrepreneurial spirit, people can make, make partner here. And uh, we are one of the most successful partnerships in the world. And, you know, it's, it's uh, as you would expect, anything that's very, very successful is not necessarily easy to achieve. Uh, but it, it's a certainly an achievable thing. I think we made up eight partners as a, as a global firm this year. I think we made 10 the year before. So we are regularly making up um, partners. We're still a relatively small firm, you know, for a global firm. I think we're something like 700 lawyers. Um, and so, but there are, there are absolutely, you know, um, opportunities here to make partner. And, you know, you've pointed out a few special things that have happened to us in the last, you know, few weeks. There's been lots of special things that have happened to us over the last eight years. And I've got no doubt there's going to be lots of special things that happen to us in the next 12 months. On, you know, we're, we're talking to a number of people uh, in the market now who, if they join us, will, will continue to um, you know, lead to further growth uh, in London. Well, uh, just an, another exciting announcement that happened this month uh, came in the way of a 7% uh, pay hike for associates. So I think that puts NQs on 99,500 pounds and all the yeah. way to five year PQE on 155,000 yeah. uh, pounds. Yeah. What kind of work can associates get uh, here? I mean, you're paying them a lot of money, so is it a quality, quality or are you talking about quality or quantity? Both. Right, well, in quality terms, I think we can you know, absolutely guarantee that, that people will be working and having greater levels of, it, of uh, exposure and responsibility on the cases they work on. I can almost guarantee that just through just the, the, the practical um, effect of having only 18 associates to 14 partners. By definition, that means that you'll, you'll, you know, you'll get a lot more responsibility. And in fact, one of the new recruits that joined us a few weeks ago um, is a not, a, not yet a one-year qualified lawyer from a UK Magic Circle practice, was remarking to me that he was doing something on, a, on an arbitration case that he, he wouldn't have got anywhere near to in his existing firm. He was actually drafting submissions for an arbitration hearing. So he was the lawyer, you know, not yet one year qualified, who was, who was thinking through the case and drafting what he thought was the, was the, the, submit, the, the correct submissions for that, for that hearing. And he was overjoyed because, you know, this is precisely the reason why he came here. And we'd, it was very pleasing for me to know that we delivered on that on that promise to him, and that, you know, that that story is a story that's told over and over again with with the associates here. Quantity: anyone who comes to our firm from a magic circle practice or from another U.S. practice um, is not going to be surprised by the level, the quantity of work. We are very, very similar to any other magic circle practice and U.S. practice. We have not got people chained to their desks. We you know, people work hard here, work long days here, but, you know, they're not, it's not a sweatshop, whatever that may mean, but it's not that. And, you know, the bonus levels are set, uh, levels I think are achievable. Um, and, you know, we, we don't over-recruit people, 
which means that when we do recruit an associate, it means that we think we've got real capacity uh, issues that we need to meet, which means people come in and, for the most part, they come in and, and become busy quite quickly. Um, and, you know, you do a solid week here of good billable work. We don't have a lot of the sort of, you know, meetings that a lot of firms have about training and um, business, you know, it, uh, it's, it's sort of working in a law firm stripped of a lot of the unnecessary stuff that a lot of firms seem to feel it's necessary to put their associates through. So people are fundamentally doing billable work, it means it's easier to achieve targets, it means, you know, and people don't want to sit around doing nothing. So it's good for people to be busy. You know, as lawyers, we inherently worry when we're not busy. So, but no one's going to work harder here than they are in my old firm, Kirkland and Ellis, or, uh, you know, uh, any magic circle firm. You know, they'll work the same. There's nothing particularly special. The reason that we can pay the salaries we pay is because we make a lot more money on what we, on what we do. We don't have the cost base. Uh, you know, we just don't have a lot of the costs that bigger firms have. So it means that we've got more money available to to pay people and fundamentally if you set yourself up as a platform to deliver first class legal services in the area of litigation we need to hire the best people we need to attract the best people and as Martin said in his interview that's a combination of pay uh, opportunity quality of work and the right working environment uh, that people feel comfortable in uh, to perform at their best uh, and you just mentioned stripping back costs or, or very low costs here and it's obviously a hugely profitable firm uh, there is a perception amongst associates in the markets that smaller, more leaner U.S. practices do cut back and don't have that spend on support functions. So you're likely to be doing a lot more uh, document review and the sort of uh, more junior level work that can sometimes be outsourced in the larger firms. How yeah. do you address that here? Well, we outsource it here. I mean, all of that. I mean, our, if you speak to any of our associates here, they do not do document review, period. They may oversee document review exercises. So we, um, right from the very beginning of this practice, we figured out that clients don't like to pay three, four, five hundred pounds an hour for lawyers to do document review. They want that work done by well-qualified people, but people they're paying 75, 100, 125 pounds an hour. We don't have those people permanently here, so we hire in paralegals contract lawyers to perform our large document exercises. And so they just don't do that work here. It's not true. It's simply not true. And um, what they are left with is therefore the interesting stuff, um, witness statements, correspondence, uh, attending hearings, doing trials. You know, all our associates get real litigation experience. I've got, there are junior associates here who've done three trials from start to finish. So they've seen a trial, a commercial dispute run from first pleadings all the way through to a hearing and trial and judgment over three times. Well, you know, I'm sorry, but that is just not... My experience, at least, the people I interview come from bigger firms. They just don't have that experience. Um, they just don't have it, and that's what they're coming here for. Uh, so it, it's, it's, that may be a perception, but it's, it's simply not true. Our business model is, is, pretty, is pretty simple. Is we, hire, we try and hire the best people at partner level. We try and hire the best people at associate level. We set them free of all the stuff and administration and nonsense that you get in bigger full-service firms. And um, we work in small teams uh, on high-value cases. You know, we bill the clients and we get paid. And we don't waste any money on stuff that you don't need to do. We care about uh, intelligence. We care about books. We care about the kind of things that you need to be an effective litigator. So you know, we're signed up to all of the research things that you would expect us to be signed up to. Um, you know, no expense spare when it comes to resources for doing the thing that we do, litigation. Uh, but we don't waste money on, on other things. Quinn's HQ is obviously over in the US, uh, but the firm has offices all over the world, including here in London. Yeah. How closely do the offices work together? And, it, 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 and again, there is a perception in the market that, yeah. that at, at smaller U.S. firms that are headquartered over the, across the Atlantic. Yeah, you're just servicing the U.S. work and doing the U.K. elements that the U.S. partners are bringing in for U.S. Yeah. partners. How true is that here? And, and it's totally and utterly false. The, all the work here has been generated out of London. Um, I knew when I joined Quinn 
partly because of my experience in other US firms before I came here, that our success was dependent upon um, generating our own work, our own brand, our own reputation in this marketplace. And that was 100% what we were focused on on day one. So if anything, I'd say the balance of uh, the balance of trade, if you will, between London and other offices often goes the other way. In other words, we're giving more work to the US than we receive. But we wouldn't be here today if we'd relied on work from, from the US. Just simply wouldn't have been successful. And uh, you know, our reputation in London is built on the work we do here, the work we win here, and the quality of our partners um, and the clients they have. So that is, again, totally, totally false. What are the advantages and disadvantages of being a litigation-only uh, boutique? Uh, for, a, for an associate, it's the total and utter concentrated um, exposure to all things litigation. As an associate here, you could expect on a, on a sort of you know, weekly basis to work for me, Supervisor, Ted Greeno, Stephen Ugush, on four or five cases. So you're working with leading practitioners in their respective areas on four or five cases on a daily basis. Uh, drafting correspondence for them, doing witness statements, uh, thinking about the law, doing research, strategizing with that partner about where the case is going, what should be done. So it's an, a, a concentrated um, experience of all things related to litigation and arbitration. And I, I believe, I suppose I would say this, wouldn't I, but I believe that the opportunity here for someone who's interested to become a, 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 a litigator um, who will have real um, influence on the market and will build uh, their own reputation in this market. This is a, an opportunity unmatched in any other firm. Whether you look at other boutiques or whether you look at big firms, the people we have here are phenomenal and you will work with all of them and you will work directly with all of those people. Just quickly, what three words would you use to define Quinn's culture? Entrepreneurial, hardworking, fun. Great. Uh, Richard, thanks very much for your time. All right, great. Thank thanks you. very much.